Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Civil Life. Myself, Milan Patel, Assistant Professor at Delhi Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today's topic is Civil Engineering Materials. This is the fourth lecture of this chapter. In previous lecture, lecture number three, we have discussed two topics, two materials, which is stone and aggregate. In today's lecture, we will cover first steel, second soil, and lastly we will cover mortar. Okay. So without wasting much time, let's begin with steel. In this material, we will discuss first what is steel. Okay. Then we will discuss various types of steel. Then uses of steel and lastly we will cover various market forms available in steel okay so let's start with what is steel steels are essentially alloys of iron and carbon but they always contain other elements okay either as impurities or alloying elements steel is main metal metal containing 95% or more iron and 0.1 to 1.5% carbon. Smaller amounts around 1.6% of manganese, nickel to improve the certain properties of steel. Okay? Carbon improves strength or hardness but reduces the ductility and the toughness of the steel. Okay? It is an intermediate stage of cast iron and wrought iron. Cast iron can take compressive stress while wrought iron can take tensile strength more. Okay? Steel is suitable for all construction processes. Okay? It is highly elastic, ductile, malleable, and weldable material. Okay? It has a high tension and compressive strength and resists wear and tear much better compared to any other materials. So, this is called as steel. Now, let's discuss various types of steel. First type is mild steel, in which carbon content is 0.1 to 0.25%. The properties of mild steel are, it is ductile and malleable, it corrodes quickly, it can be permanently magnetized, it is tough and more elastic than cast iron and wrought iron, and withstands shocks and impact load well. It is equally strong in tension, compression, and shear. Its specific gravity is about 7.8. It is not much affected by saline water. It is mainly used in nails, screws, car bodies, and as a structural steel. Okay, this is about mild steel. Second is medium carbon steel, in which carbon content is 0.25 to 0.75%. The properties of medium carbon steel is first, its welding is difficult, it is more elastic compared to mild steel, it is more tougher compared to mild steel, okay, it withstands stroke and vibration, it permanently magnetized, okay, it is stronger in compression than in tension, okay, its compressive strength is about 80 to 120 kN per centimeter square and it is mainly used as a structural steel, as railways and for garden tools. Okay, this is about medium carbon steel. Third is high carbon steel, in which carbon content is 0.75 to 1.1 percentage. The properties of high carbon steel are: its structure is granular. Okay, it is more tough and elastic than mild steel. It is easier to harden and then to weld. Okay. It is more difficult to forge and then to weld. Okay? It can be permanently magnetized. It is comparatively stronger in compression than in tension or in shear. Okay? It will shine vibration and shocks better. It is used in hand tools like chisels, punches, saw blades, etc. Okay? This is about the high carbon steel. Okay? That's all about the types of steel. Now, let's discuss various uses of steel. It is used as reinforcement bars for concrete or to make RCC structures. It is used in steel pipes, 
tanks etc it is used as structural material in various process in steel bridges and to make structural beams okay it is used in sanitary and sewer fittings in various types of buildings it is used as non structural material like grills doors windows etc okay it is used as corrugated sheets okay that's all about the uses of steel now let's discuss various market forms of steel first is flat bar you can clearly see in this figure second is angle form okay third is rounded bars okay fourth is hexagon type of bar fifth is number of steel plates or steel sheets are there channel section is also available in the market white planes i beams or i girders are there square tubes are also available rounded tubes is also there chamfer bar is also available in the market t section is also available half oval is also available in the market and number of brick bars as a structural steel is also available in the market okay these are the various market forms of steel okay? that's all about the material steel now let's discuss the second material in today's lecture which is soil in which first we will discuss what is soil then we will discuss various types of soil and lastly we will discuss bearing capacity of soil let's start with what is soil soil is the unaggregated or uncemented deposits of mineral and or organic particles or fragments covering the large portion of earth and crust okay it includes boulders sand gravel clay silt etc the size of soil varies from microns up to a large size boulders okay now let's discuss various types of soil first type of soil is soft soil it is ordinary soil it is compressible and yield when loaded it can be loaded within reasonable limits it is suitable for ordinary structures okay the example of soft soil are clay soil loam common earth etc this figures gives the soft soil okay second is spreading soil when this soil is loaded it spread out beneath the structures it is non cohesive and give way to later escape when loaded if the soils are confined they are compressed and can be loaded considerably well okay the example of spreading soil are sand and gravel okay third is hard soil it is incompressible and strong without yielding it withstand very heavy loads compared to soft soil and spreading soil it is suitable for heavy structures like multi story buildings overhead tank etc the example of this hard soil is rocky soil and stony soil okay that's all about the various types of soil now let's discuss bearing capacity of soil the capacity to withstand maximum load without yielding by soil is called as bearing capacity of the soil okay it depends on characteristics of particles like cohesion fineness compactness etc okay rocky soil and sandy soil have more bearing capacity compared to clay soil rocky soil have highest bearing capacity than the other soils okay bearing capacity of soil is used for designing foundation of the structure and for selecting the various type of foundation for the buildings okay that's all about the bearing capacity of the soil that's all about the second material soil now let's discuss the last material in today's lecture which is mortar in mortar we will see first what is mortar various types of mortar then we will discuss various functions of mortar and last we will discuss various qualities of wood mortar Let's start with what is mortar. 
Mortar is a material used in masonry construction to fill the gaps between the bricks and blocks used in construction. This is called as mortar. Okay. Mortar binds bricks and blocks together to give strength and stability to a wall. Okay. A mortar joint ensures the bond between the compressed hard blocks and this bond gives the masonry its cohesion. Okay. Mortar is a mixture of sand and a binder such as cement or lime and a water. This is applied as a paste which then sets hard. Okay. Mortar is a workable paste which is prepared by adding required amount of water to a mixture of binding material and fine aggregate. This plastic paste is useful to hold building materials such as stone, brick, etc. Okay, this is called as mortar. Now let's discuss various types of mortar. First is lime mortar, second is cement mortar, third is gypsum mortar. And the fourth is Surki mortar. First type is lime mortar. In case of lime mortar, lime is used as a binding material. There are two types of limes, namely fat lime and hydronic lime, is used for preparing lime mortar. Okay. Here in white color you can see the lime mortar. Okay. Fat lime in lime mortar requires two to three times more sand compared to the hydronic lime. And it is used for drying. Hydraulic line and sand is in proportion of 1 and 2, will give good result in damp conditions and also suitable for water load areas. Okay? The lime water has high plasticity, so it can be placed very easily in any conditions. Okay? That's all about the lime water. This is basically used in foundation. Okay? Second is cement water. This is called as cement mortar. In this, cement is used as a binding material and sand is used as a fine aggregate. Okay? The proportion of cement and sand is decided based on the specified durability and working conditions. Cement mortar will give high strength and resistivity against the water. Okay? The proportion of cement to sand may vary from 1 by 2 to 1 by 6. Okay? That's all about the cement mortar. Third is gypsum mortar. This is a gypsum mortar. Okay. Gypsum mortar consists of plaster and soft sand as a binding material and fine aggregate. Okay. In Egyptian ancient structures called pyramids, gypsum mortar is mainly used. Okay. Gypsum mortar we have low durability in damp conditions. So gypsum mortar is the combination of jot powder, water. And descent. Okay, that's all about gypsum mortar. Fourth is surki mortar. Okay, this is called as surki. Surki is a finely powdered burnt clay which is free from any admixtures or impurities. Okay, it will give more strength compared to sand and cheaply available in the market. Surki mortar consists lime as a binder, surki as a fine aggregate, and a water. Okay, here. Surki is used as a fine aggregate. Sometimes half amount of sand and half amount of surki powder is used. That's all about surki mortar. That's all about various types of mortar. Now let's discuss functions of mortar. First is it provides binding force or cohesion between the structural units. Second, it acts as medium for distributing the force throughout the structure uniform. Additional strength and resistance against rain penetration and other such weathering agencies is provided by the mortar. In stone or brick masonry, it fills up empty joints. A thin liquid mortar used for such purpose is called as grout. It does pointing or plastering to the structures. Okay, these are the various functions of the mortar. Now, let's see the qualities of good mortar. It should be easily workable. It should set and harden quickly so that construction could be done with speed. Okay, it should not develop any cracks on drying. Okay, it should be durable or long lasting. Okay, it should be 
capable of developing the design stresses it should be capable of resisting penetration of rain water and it should be cheap and economical in the various areas okay these are the various qualities of good mortar okay that's all about the mortar i hope you all understand these three materials steel soil and mortar see you soon in the next lectures thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel civil line thank you